Listen, I've told my mother you're here. How did she take it? Well, I told her that you were a lady. Ha! Well, you told me you were one. It's the sort of thing that she rather... Well, you she... mean that she's hooked on titles and all that stuff? Yes, I suppose I do mean that. What kind of milk did you put in this tea? I only drink skimmed. Or cream if I have to. Listen, have you got any other clothes in that bag? A bikini? No. My shoes are in the garden, but I don't need them for breakfast. Uh, yes, you do. I'll fetch those. Listen, everything's going to be OK, I think. You make me quite nervous. Just don't discuss anything to do with sex, OK? Don't be stupid. I never talk about it. At meals. I expect your father has a stately home. It's nothing like as stately as it was. Falling to pieces, actually. We had a lot of death in the family, you see. So there were death duties. What a shame. My great-uncle got kicked to death by a frightful horse that the groom warned him not to ride. Well, I never. Just goes to show, doesn't it? Yes, it was rather awful, actually, because afterwards the groom had to shoot the horse and then he shot himself. A bit like captains going down with their ship, really. I'll get the sausages, Mum. And, of course, the deer park's terribly run down. And I rather think that the deer would prefer to be in a zoo with the regular meals and people admiring them. And the Westman's in an awful state because it's so haunted that Daddy can't get any builders to stay long enough to repair it. I see the ghosts, really. Because soon they won't have a West Wing to haunt. I don't think even Mum will believe that. Fred, pass Lady Mundy the sugar. You'd better eat up, Minnie. You said you had to go in half an hour. All right, then. Daddy simply hates the House of Lords. No wonder they have to pay them to go there. I mean, sitting about in mothy old ermine and, you know, coronets all day. Well, we have to have a government, don't we, or else where would we be? Goodness knows. Overrun by foreigners, that's what. I must say that some of them have awfully pretty clothes. And it must be such a relief if you are plain spotty to be able to wear one of those black masks every time you go out. I mean, everybody must think you're ravishing underneath. But they do have the most awful operations. If you're at all well born, you have your clit sewn up so you can't feel anything. Well, people have their little ways. It wouldn't do if we were all the same. We have to remember they don't have a National Health Service. Why well, have I got to go now? It's not safe to have you about. Just look at what you said at breakfast. Just slipped out. I mean, it wasn't absolutely marvellous about everything else. I do think you might thank me. Thank you so much for having me in for breakfast, for everything. I'm very glad to have met you, any friend of Gavin's. Fred? Fred! I've no idea oh. where you can be. Well, never mind. Uh, I'll convey your regards. Goodbye. Best of luck. I must say, you are someone who makes the least of everything that happens to you. You simply wasted me, haven't you? But I suppose you're content with your boring old lot. Not going to kiss you. Don't feel like it. These are for you, love Minnie. That's a nice little time bomb to leave in Mum's lounge. If I ever meet anyone else with a parrot in a car at night, it can freeze. Hmm. Turner's not right. Uh uh. Ah, we are. Dear Joan, thank you for the party. Meeting you is the best bit. Gavin. I can't possibly put my address or telephone number on this. She'd find it too forward. <laughs> what if she did call? Did your husband buy into that restaurant in the end, Miss Helen? I'm sorry, I'm not switched on. <laughs> what was that you said? 
I was asking if your husband brought into that restaurant. Yes, he did. And if she doesn't shape up, then it's going to have to be O-U-T for Miss Sharon. We're short of juniors now. I know that. Just keep them up to the mark and then we can avoid these little unpleasantnesses. beautiful. She's probably accosted by strange men day and night. I'd be off to a much better start if I just walked on without saying a word. She'd be tremendously grateful and realise how nice I am. But I could have a look at those birds she's feeding. That way I can casually have a look at who's feeding them as well. Hello. Oh, Jenny. I can't even recognise my own junior. That's the lot. I haven't got any more. I've got some bread. They're a lot of different kinds. You can read which they are from the boards over there. Funny, she does look different away from work. I suppose we'll better start getting back. Where are you going for your holidays this year, Jenny? I don't know. I can't go far because of the boy. He's only two and a half. I didn't know you'd been married. I haven't been. Oh, sorry. You wouldn't know. I met this bloke on a camping holiday in France. He was Norwegian, a student. I wrote to him afterwards to tell him I was having a baby, but he never answered. So there it was. You just went ahead and had the baby? I had him all right. Everybody kept telling me I ought to get him adopted. But I couldn't see the sense in that. He might have had any sort of life if I'd have done that. And he's fine, is he? He's a terror. How old were you? Seventeen. Well, nearly. I haven't told anyone at work, because I didn't want it to get out to Mr Adrian. Oh, I, I won't tell him. Just came up, because of the holidays. Who looks after him while you're at work? My mum. She's been lovely to Andrew. That's why I always stay in evenings, to give her a rest. That's his name, then? I wouldn't have called him that if his name wasn't Andrew. Sorry, Jenny. That's OK. It's nice to have been able to tell you. I feel a bit of an idiot when the other juniors are talking about their boyfriends. It's funny, isn't it? How everybody expects you to be just like them. Especially about feelings. You couldn't feel the same if the same things hadn't happened to you, could you? Well, you can imagine things about people a bit. There's art, too, of course. What's art for? Recognising things, I think. When you say art, you don't just mean pictures and that, do you? No, I mean the whole lot. What, like music and reading and acting? And architecture, cinema, opera, poetry, gardens, sculpture. Gardens? I can't see the art in gardens. Well, I don't mean that every garden is a work of art. Of course not. I simply meant, well, it could be. Even doing people's hair could be, Jenny. I'm looking for Harry in makeup. Yeah, right this way. Harry? Hiya, Gavin. Are you going to have time to get changed? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but I didn't get a chance to tell you. Could you look up, please? I agreed to work late because the opera's off for me. Why? What's the matter? Oh, God. Winthrop? Mm-hmm. Our foreign ashtrays are becoming something of a hazard. Could you look down, please? Thank you. You'll have to take someone else. There isn't anybody else. What do you mean? This place is full of glamorous young women, clamouring for a bit of culture. How do you feel about the opera, Marilyn? Cousin. Anyway, she's working. No, Kevin, don't put the blusher so far down. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? Use a puff for that. Well, look, I've got to get going. I'm late already. Look after that eye. 
Looks like a sunset and a travel brochure. Thanks a lot. Oh, Gavin! Try and find someone really attractive. I'm sorry, no, I bought your ticket. <clears throat> I wish I had someone to talk with. Oops, oh, sorry. Terribly sorry. She's smiling almost as if she likes having people bumping into her and spilling her drink. Good God, she might have done that on purpose. Perhaps that's why she comes to the opera. She won't catch me like that. I know a thing or two. That's exactly the sort of way Minnie would behave. Thank goodness she isn't here. Joan! And how are you? Fine, thank you. Would you like to join me for a drink? Yes, sure. Do you often come alone to the opera? Yes. Most people I know don't care for it. All they regard it as a luxury. That's the last thing it is for me. For me, it's like being a fish put back into water. You mean because it's larger than life? No, it's exactly the size of life. Just a lot of undersized people about. Mm. We've got plenty of time. Listen, I'm in a box. Would you care to join me? Thank you, very much. I wonder how much playing that secrets game has to do with why I feel so comfortable around her. What does she look like behind those glasses? I'm taking you home for dinner, is that all right? Very all right. Do you think that in real life, people do actually die for love? I think people will do almost anything for it. And for some, that might include dying. Harder to live for it, though. It goes on for so much longer. You can help it. Let's have a simple merry time. You're only whatever you are once. Will you wait here for a moment? going to move to another part of the forest. Make yourself at home. It's the most beautiful, comfortable room I've ever seen. It's my one private place. I spend a lot of time here when Dimitri is away, which is quite often. Oh, I forgot to thank you for that card. It's wonderfully silent here. A bit magic. That's what you mean it to be, isn't it? Exactly. It isn't meant to be like the rest of life at all. You like the fire for me, Gavin? I've got a room too. You know, private. Only my mother goes in to clean it once a week. I wish she'd leave it alone, but, well, it would hurt her feelings if I asked her to do this. You worry a lot about other people's feelings, don't you? I'm curious about you. Tell me some more about yourself. <laughs> 